Now, the Blackmagic Full Frame 6K is a great camera, and I've been using it for a few weeks, or actually kind of a few months. Now, I've had a lot of fun with it. It has amazing image quality, but not all that glitters is gold. In fact, there are 10 reasons why I kind of hate this thing sometimes. We'll get into it. Now, the first thing that I'm not the biggest fan of on the Blackmagic Full Frame 6K is gonna be its low light capabilities. Now, for something that has a full frame sensor and something that also has a dual native ISO at 400 and 3200, the low light actually still doesn't perform that great. Now, personally for me, this is a camera that usually stays on sticks or in controlled environments. So generally speaking, I'm lighting my scenarios to make sure that everything looks good, but I kind of feel a little bit of miss because I have to make it that use case instead of choosing to make it that use case. If I want to use this as the only camera that I'm going to have in my kit, and I might be in uncontrolled low light situations, this might not be the camera that I'm looking for. Even when using some faster lenses, when I jump up the ISO, it doesn't look the greatest in the world, at least in comparison to other full frame cameras that are around the same price point. And here's looking at Sony for those type of things. Now, in general, a lot of you guys aren't running around in the dark with your full frame cameras, but if I do find myself in that situation, at least I kind of want the choice to something that works a little bit better. Now. I get the fact that this camera does have 6K B-Raw internally, but one of the things that kind of makes me a little bit annoyed, especially because it's on other cameras, is the fact that there isn't ProRes anymore. Now, I'm a big proponent of using a camera at the highest quality that you have, especially in context of the shoots that you have. You might take down your compression, but overall, you're probably gonna use the raw features if it has it, but not having things like ProRes for smaller client gigs or better file delivery is a little bit of a miss, especially because it was on other cameras to begin with, and it's not on this camera specifically. I understand they want more people to use B-RAW and they do kind of give you DaVinci Resolve Studio for free in order for you to do it, but it's kind of weird that if you do want to save on all of that size, or maybe you don't know how to use a RAW workflow, you no longer have the option of ProRes, which I think is something that they could fix. Now, the third thing is going to be the elephant in the room that everybody complains about, and it's going to be the ergonomics of this camera. Now, on one end, I am kind of happy of its form factor because I have gigantic hands and this fits, especially with the battery grip, and it kind of feels like the first time you had a 1DX Mark II from Canon, except it does have B-RAW in it, it shoots in 6K, it does all the other fun stuff. However, in terms of the ergonomics of the full frame 6K, you either have to have a really heavy setup because like this is pretty heavy even without a lens, and that's from somebody that has been strength training since seventh grade, but you do need a lot of things to rig this guy up if you want to put it into a more production standpoint. You are gonna have to hook up different cables and different things to it, and one thing that I really don't like is when you want to rig this guy up with say a v-mount battery it does end up either blocking the screen or making a really awkward form factor in terms of where the battery is going to be placed i kind of feel like on one end they could have made this a little bit more friendly to actually rigging it up because the monitor is so nice nice enough in fact that i actually don't want to get another monitor for my setups but at the same time if i want to put a v-mount battery anywhere useful i end up blocking the screen and i don't even have the touch features that you get while actually using this thing this is something that the black magic cameras have kind of suffered for for a little while and a lot of people wanted a Q camera and ended up not getting one, which everybody was annoyed about, which I guess is kind of a fair thing to say. But I kind of wish that in a Mark II, or maybe if they make another Ursa version, um, they maybe make the form factor a little bit more conducive to people that kind of want to not bring a bunch of things just to get this guy to work. Now, another thing that I don't like about the Blackmagic 6K is the fact that you're still watching the video about it and you haven't subscribed to the channel, which like 85% of you haven't done. Click that button down below because we have a ton of videos coming out and I'm sure you're enjoying it if you made it this far. So let's just do ourselves both a favor. You subscribe, you see more videos and I don't cry myself to sleep. Also, speaking of the form factor, the grip and stuff like that, the battery life on these guys still aren't great. I mean, they are doing a better job than some of the old ZA batteries on the old pocket systems, but even using some of these Sony MPF batteries, the battery life still isn't the best in the world. However, it is kind of nice that they made a battery grip for this guy for longer lasting battery. However, going back to the previous point, if I don't want to use this grip because there's not a lot of cages that include it, I would have to go through all that V-mount stuff, which I, it's not my favorite. However, it does work if you want to use a battery grip and you want to carry this guy around with just this and a lens and the camera strap because this actually gets kind of heavy. Another thing that also probably isn't going to necessarily be a thing I'm going to hate in the future is the fact that there isn't a ton of modern L-mount lenses. Now, the whole L-mount alliance, which I, I actually don't actually know what that means. I just know that the Blackmagic has L-mount now. But what ends up happening is that when I want to find a bunch of other lenses for the L-mount, it's kind of hit or miss. Some companies have adapted to this new mount by creating L-mount lenses in the cinema lens form fashion, or even some anamorphic lenses. But some have only offered like an X-mount, an EF-mount, or 
an RF mount or an, or, you know, the other mounts that aren't going to be the Panasonic or the Leica mount. One thing about this guy is that it does have that full frame L mount sensor, but if I want to find a lot of lenses and other configurations outside of say like Sigma or getting a Panasonic lens, I'm going to have to do a little bit of looking. And also some of the selection within those mounts aren't the best and most plentiful in the world. Now, a pro tip if you want to avoid stress and depression is just getting a PL mount adapter and using PL mount lenses when using cinema glass. That's something that I've gotten to the habit of doing because I really don't have a main camera per se. I switch around depending on the job and all the time and whatever is in my house. And having PL mount lenses just means that I need an adapter instead of a new set of lenses every single time. Another thing that probably needs improvement on this camera is going to be the fact that it does have a one card slot. That didn't sound right. But the Blackmagic 6K Pro does have one card slot. Now, this wouldn't be a gigantic deal. The Red Komodo X and the Red Raptor have the same thing, but I'm an incredibly paranoid person and I have lost data on my cards twice. Now, one of the things that can be saved is if I core to a card and an SSD drive, which you can attach on the body itself, but I kind of do like the idea of just having dual cards so I could have redundant recording or relay recording if I need extra room, especially because the B-RAW files coming out of this, which is literally your only option, they're incredibly big files especially if you want to shoot at the lowest compression or highest compression. You know, whichever one is going to have bigger file sizes, it's going to take up a lot of it. Now we're going to get in kind of the stupid gripes that aren't that big of a deal when you think about it, but kind of are a big deal when you do. Um, and it's the fact that you can't actually shoot 60 frames a second in 6K. What I mean by that's kind of a stupid thing to complain about is that the vast majority of cameras aren't going to have the highest of frame rates in the world. However, using 48 frames a second, which is more than fine at DCI, I kind of wanted to have 60 frames because that just seems like a standard that a lot of cameras have. Tons of cameras could shoot in 24 and 60 frames a second, but the fact that you could only get up to 48 while using the 6K in 6K, and if you want extra frame rates, you have to go down in your resolution, which also crops it on the sensor, which is your only option because you're shooting a B-RAW, uh, kind of annoys me in a couple of different regards. Keeping in mind, the price of this camera is under $2,600, so I kind of get there are some things I'm gonna have to live without, but it is kind of annoying that that feature was on other cameras that were in this form factor that Blackmagic offered, and it just isn't in this one, which kind of makes it a little bit weird and frustrating. But I kind of just wish there was 60 frames a second at 6K, just because if I do want to get slow motion footage, that's probably the slowest I'll go, and it's just not in this camera. Another thing that has to do with the body that's not my favorite favorite about the Blackmagic 6K is the mini XLR. Now, if you see on these guys, you do have an XLR port, which is fine. It's great. You're able to get some high quality sound, but you can't just plug in the XLR cables that you have. You have to have a mini XLR to a full size XLR. And if you don't have the right one in the right direction, well, then you're just kind of screwed in terms of getting decent audio, which just doesn't seem like the most attractive thing in the world. Now, I find that mini XLR cables are a little bit easier to find now, but when I did have my first Blackmagic camera, it was really tough to find them or you just had to wait a stupid amount of time in order to get one. But having that one extra cable just to get decent audio outside of 3.5 millimeter is just one more thing you have to get and one more item you have to add into your kit, which might be frustrating to a lot of new users. Now, the last thing, my last gripe, and this is probably the dumbest one, especially in consideration of the type of camera it is, is that it doesn't have autofocus. He hear me out for a second. Now, having a cinema camera, one thing you're going to have to live with is that the camera may or may not have autofocus, which is kind of par for the course. It's a cinema camera. They traditionally don't have autofocus except for a bunch of cinema cameras that have come out in the last couple of years and they also have some flavor of autofocus. Now, if you are using a native lens with electronic contacts, you can get a single shot autofocus, but to be honest, I don't really know how useful that is outside of an interview setting where they're not gonna move their head at all. So I'm just gonna count that as not really having autofocus. Now, this is a stupid complaint and I absolutely understand that it is kind of dumb because buying a cinema camera for autofocus is still taboo in 2024. However, for a camera at this size, or if I only wanna have one camera and maybe I don't have the opportunity to manual focus all of the time, maybe there's an angle where I need a follow focus or someone to pull it for me, if I don't have the resource to have that person or I don't have a good follow focus, some shots I'm just going to miss or some angles I'm not gonna be able to get that you could get while using autofocus. It's the dumbest complaint in the world for a lot of people that are into filmmaking and a lot of cinematographers, but for a lot of people starting out and entered into the system because it's a lower price range, not having autofocus might be something that's a deal breaker. So if you're someone that needs a camera that has autofocus, especially good continuous face tracking autofocus, it's not gonna be the one for you. 
Now, for a lot of you guys, you're probably wondering why I didn't mention things like rolling shutter. And that's because I have an entire video that's coming up talking about rolling shutter. And to be honest, it might not be the worst thing in the world. Now, to be completely fair and starting off with the negative and talking about things I might not like on the Blackmagic 6K full frame camera, I'm actually gonna make a video about the 10 things that I love. And if you wanna see that video, it's probably gonna be over here whenever it comes up. Hope you guys enjoy the video. At the very least, you learned a thing or two, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.